Welcome back. I'm Pastor Chris Titus, and I want to um, welcome you today to services. And we will be talking about the concept of true love and looking at biblical examples and also comparing them to worldly examples. But let's begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that you love us despite who we struggle to be. And we are thankful for the blessing that you have given us in your son, Jesus Christ, and the gifting of the Holy Spirit so that we are connected to you in divine love. Help us to appreciate this. Allow us to honor you today with our words and our music. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today is Valentine's Day, and it's a time when our culture celebrates love and the idea of love in the United States, about $19 billion is spent on Valentine's uh, and all that kind of stuff around the world, all the hearts and candies and flowers that are spent, not to mention the more expensive gifts, which add to that total. Uh, in our culture, love means many things. And the human concepts of love are sometimes realistic and sometimes very unrealistic. There is confusion about really what love is, and Valentine's Day sort of adds to that confusion. I did some research on this, and I found the top four Christian Valentine's cards sent by men to women with a Christian theme. See if you notice the theme here. So the worst four Valentines are as follows. Number four, the card reads, if you're looking for your knight in shining armor, I just happen to be wearing the armor of God. Pretty tacky. Number three, how about this one in a card? Hey, is your name Grace? Because you are amazing. Number two, you and I are like the loaves and fishes. We might just be a miracle. That one's pretty good. And finally, the worst Christian Valentine from a man to a woman it reads, did Jesus rub mud in my eyes? Because I was blind to beauty until I saw you. That's terrible. Do not send that card on Valentine's Day. But I guess it goes back to this idea that love is very complicated. And the topic is something that's sometimes hard to talk about, especially in church. But we're going to do that today. So how did we get started on this uh, annual celebration of Valentine's Day and love? Well, there are several theories about this tradition, but it traces back primarily to a Roman priest named Valentine in the third century. And this particular priest performed weddings for uh, soldiers who were forbidden to marry because the emperor believed that single men made better fighters, and so he banned weddings uh, for the soldiers. But this priest, Father Valentine, uh, went ahead and did some of these weddings anyway in defiance of the emperor. He also was known for giving out uh, hearts that were cut, up, cut out of parchment, and he would give them to persecuted Christians for encouragement. Ultimately, Valentine is put to death by the emperor uh, for his disobedience, and he became a saint of the Catholic Church. Now, you fast forward about two centuries, and Pope Gielis took the opportunity to take the St. Valentine's Day legend and use it to eliminate an ongoing pagan festival that was happening at the time, a festival called Junio Fabrutia, which sounds very Italian. And it was a celebration of fertility and the goddess of love. And there was a lot of drinking and a carousing associated with it, which the Pope did not like. So in 1495, the Pope uh, claimed and renamed the festival St. Valentine's Day and made it a church holiday in recognition of this uh, Father Valentine. And so... Unfortunately, like many of the church holidays originally established to uh, honor God in some way or honor uh, saints of the church, uh, it has been uh, converted by the modern culture. Valentine's Day is now turned into a commercial festival of its own. It's less about uh, 
sending love to persecuted Christians, and it's more about buying and selling things. And this is what we see with the advertisements, you know, all the jewelry advertisements on TV around Valentine's Day that try to guilt us into uh, buying jewelry. If we really love the person, we would do this. So this um, Valentine's Day celebration doesn't have the debauchery and the drunkenness of the uh, former festival that the Pope eliminated, but it does have some of its own excesses. And as I said, the buying and selling of things in order to express love is not a very effective way to um, show somebody that you care because it really doesn't express true love, express some sort of um, strong uh, feelings for somebody, certainly, but not love in its true sense. And so modern Valentine's Day has become a pretty big business, as I mentioned, and this is uh, far away from what the church originally had planned. Unfortunately, people in, in today's culture even feel uh, less loved if the Valentine's gift they received is not something expensive or extraordinary. And so again, as I said, it's not a holiday that recognizes what true love is all about. It's something more of a symbolism of maybe hearts and flowers. Um, this is very sad that this has happened, especially when you look at the history of it. The name Valentine comes from the Latin, and it's uh, the word valens, or in its proper name, Valentinus. And so it means strong, powerful and mighty. And the Latin scripture translates valens uh, several different places in the Bible, but one appears in Genesis 10, beginning in verse 8, which reads, Cush was the father of Nimrod, who became a valens, mighty warrior, on the earth, and he was a valens warrior before God. Now, just to be clear, if you give your wife a vacuum cleaner for Valentine's Day, you may be a Nimrod. So don't do that. It's pastoral warning there for you. But the idea here is with Valens, which lends its name to Valentine and then ultimately used in our Valentine's Day, is that this is a love that is powerful, strong, and mighty, something that is consistent and not based on some fleeting emotions. Um, these are robust words. This is the love that God wants us to have for him, and God wants us to share with each other. And so this word valens uh, is important, this Valentinus type of love. The Apostle John writes quite frequently about this, and he mentions it uh, several times in his letter uh, we call 1 John. And this is a description of divine love. So take a listen to 1 John 4, beginning in verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And we can see from this passage that love is part of God's character. It's part of his very nature. And it's expressed in the way that he interacts with his creation. He interacts with us. Divine love, of course, is ultimately demonstrated in the culmination of Jesus' um, death on the cross. This sacrificial love that is given for, um, for us, for our sinful selves that we don't deserve, but it's given for us anyway. God's love is Valens. It's not the commercial Valentine type of thing, but it's strong and mighty and all-encompassing. And John relates this theme also in his gospel. And if you look at John 3.16, reciting Jesus' very words on just how deep and mighty God's love is, declaring, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So our season of love that we celebrate in Valentine's Day is no comparison to what true love looks like, what the divine love that God demonstrates for us. God giving his son and his plan of salvation for us because he loves us. This is something we can't really comprehend. And Christ's death on the cross is actually a rare window into how deep and how 
mighty God's love really is. And Jesus notes this before his death as he explains his fate to his disciples. If you look at John 15, beginning in verse 9. As the Father loves me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This Valentine's Day, I would challenge you and myself to go back to the feelings that we have about God and how we can strengthen our response to God in divine love and then extend that out to others to demonstrate the type of love that God has modeled for us, honoring God with a loving sacrifice. Obviously, this is something that we can do through kindness or compassion or mercy for other people, but to reflect out from ourselves the divine love that God has given us. And so it's okay and it's even suggested to give Valentine's gift uh, gifts to those that you love and care about. That's probably a good idea. But today or tomorrow or the next day, maybe express love to a neighbor who is in need or be an encourager to somebody who is very discouraged. These are signs of love that uh, don't require a special holiday to give. Take loving actions for somebody as a way to celebrate. Maybe you sit down and write thank you cards to um, to the police or firefighters or first responders or healthcare workers who are out there every day um, struggling really in this world we have with the pandemic to, to protect us and care for us, maybe express love to them in some sort of agape way. That's the way God's love is described to us, this, this Greek term agape, which means either service or sacrifice or selflessness in love extended outward because of our relationship with God. Don't let Valentine's Day just become some commercial thing that you do where you have to buy something because you feel obligated to because it's Valentine's Day. Instead, look for ways to wholeheartedly express love to other people, especially those who really need it right now. A sacrifice, an honoring and caring way, a Valentinus type of love, of power and strength and might. This is what God wants us to do, we called us to do as his children. And we are to um, love beyond just cards and candies. We're supposed to be extending the definition of love from God to others. And so take a listen um, to the way this is described in the Old Testament about God's love. Exodus 15, beginning in verse 13, talks about God's compassion. It reads, In your unfailing love you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling. So this is a description of God's love. It's, it's unfailing. And it is to bring the redeemed out of where they were and ultimately to be with God uh, in his heavenly dwelling. And this is the... Um, this is the passage that relates to the Israelites, but certainly relates to us today as well. God's love is unfailing. No matter how much we struggle, no matter how angry we may get about things that happen in the world, sometimes we even get angry with God. God still loves us. This unfailing love is given to us, and we have been redeemed because of this relationship with Jesus Christ, a gift given to us by God in a sacrificial, loving way. And so we need to respond to God in our own Valens way, in our own mighty way, by turning ourselves back towards him and stepping away from some of the stuff that's happening in this very same culture that celebrates Valentine's Day often will be um, at odds with each other. Hatred and uh, difficulty and challenges and frustrations are mostly what we see in the world in between days like Valentine's. And so 
the love of God is put on display. It's not a commercial Hallmark kind of thing. It's not cheap and temporary. It's not discarded love because uh, somebody changes their mind about how they feel or their needs change or their mood changes. It's not a compromise or something that's traded away for something new. God's love is not like the world. It's completely different. It's true love. It's something that we should aspire to, that we could have that type of relationship with God and then turn around and have that kind of relationship with other people. And this is something we are to strive to do, to have a love that is not based solely on emotions and uh, attitudes about how I feel about a particular person at any given time. That is not what true love is. And so God wants us to experience this consistency in love. In fact, what's that old saying? It's easy to fall in love. Any fool can do it, but it's hard to stay in love. As flawed human beings, we will only have success with other flawed human beings in relationships when we practice the true love that is given to us, modeled for us by God. We have to practice this. We have to practice service and sacrifice and selflessness because it doesn't come easy to our nature because we are um, still struggling with sin. We shouldn't set unexpected or unrealistic expectations for Valentine's Day, but instead should just rejoice in the fact that we have connection with other people, that we can write a letter to them or write a card to them and tell them how we feel about them. Sometimes those are the most precious gifts. We can pray for somebody. We can extend kindness and generosity and encouragement as part of our Valens love, as part of a way to uh, reflect the true love that God has uh, given to us. And so we need to remember that Valentine's Day should fall in line with what God has been trying to tell us all along, which is that we are to love him and love each other, that there is joy in giving, not getting. There is joy in giving on Valentine's Day, not getting. And I hope that each of us will consider that when we think about how we look at love that is all around us. Jesus described it this way in John 13, beginning in verse 34. A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. As Christians, our hallmark is not a card. Our hallmark is loving others, even if those people disagree with us, even if those people might be at odds with us at times. Our hallmark as Christians is to reflect into the world the love of God. This is how Jesus' disciples are supposed to be known in the world. And so it takes practice for us to do it. The world teaches us that we need to argue about being right and we need to uh, be in disagreement with people who are at odds with us. This is contrary to biblical teaching. As a follower of Jesus Christ, the world should know us because we are loving and kind and merciful to others. We extend them grace when we are in disagreement with them instead of trying to um, browbeat them into seeing uh, our position as the correct one and surrendering theirs. The Lord repeats this theme over and over again in Scripture because he understands how hard it is for us to learn how to love, a true love in the way that God has uh, shown us. By the way, the Apostle John is sometimes referred to as the Apostle of Love because he writes about it so often in his letters and in his gospel uh, reflecting exactly what he found to be most important about the ministry of Jesus Christ. And so this week, practice love. Practice this idea of true love in a way that would honor God. In other words, when we say things in kindness to other people, uh, we are honoring God. Not the type that the world peddles, but this Valentinus kind of appreciation for people. Our family, our friends, our coworkers, strangers that we're going to meet should recognize in us the love of God because we have this relationship with Jesus Christ. 
this is a form of evangelism on top of just being uh, loving and kind to our neighbor. People are drawn to the positive. And so we need to be positive. We need to respond lovingly to others. And Valentine's Day is a good reminder of that. Now, is this going to be easy? No, it is not. Because sin is everywhere. We have our sinful struggles, and so do other people. But we are still called to love. And we can do so because divine love, true love, is a powerful and mighty uh, way to respond uh, to sin. Instead, we are led by the Holy Spirit to love as God loves us. And so find a way this week to reach out to someone in need and let us honor God because he loves us. Amen? There'll be a video attached to this particular sermon. I hope you enjoy it. Until the next time we meet, be blessed.